Hey, hey, descendants, welcome back to Crimson Sands. Very happy to be back today um, to share with you guys about the first descendants hotfix 1.1.3 and 1.1.3b. I know I'm a little bit late already, it's a few days after the release. Thank you very much for your patience because we also want to make sure we do give it a try first so we can share with you our feedback. So, Again, thank you very much. If you like our video and you like our content or you feel like we can work together um, to enjoy this game, The First Descendant, please subscribe our channel, give us a like on this video and commenting below about what do you think about these updates because I, I'm like mixed feeling with this, with these updates. So, Thank you very much and let's see what's update about. So I want to firstly go ahead with the 1.1.3 because a smaller a minor update after their release update on the 26th so this minor update is quick just some quick updates about some issue when here what you see this small patch notes first is they fix an issue where party members cannot join mid session if some party member move first during certain invasion dungeons so it's about some some box in the invasion and, and they fixed it and then secondly they fixed another issue where you cannot progress right after you revive during the during the play in certain invasion so again they there was a bug after they updated the updated invasion thirdly also in, in some invasions there's a damage of room zero trauma that's that's um, the Frenna's skill. Anyway, so they fixed that bug as well. So, so now for Frenna, for Haley, for Volby, the, there were some issues and they fixed it. Okay, so they also fixed when um, player detection range of field monsters was applied abnormally. They fixed when name and the description of subquest obtain Frenna's equipment material file is not properly displayed. They also fix an issue where some Russian texts were not displayed. So they fix some of the small issues in the game, um, especially some issues after they update the invasion. Okay, so what do they do with the invasion? On the hotfix 1.1.3, this is the main thing okay this is the main thing so what happened in 1.1.3 is first of all that the thing we, we we talked about since the invasion was released we've been talking about we want to be able to do party we want to be able to play with other players in the invasion so they update this okay so now we are able to to do the invasion in a public operation but but I don't know what you think about this because they didn't really increase the difficulties even if they say that they are going to spawn a lot more monsters in the invasions but imagine if you have three two even just one bonus seriously it doesn't matter how many monsters you put in it doesn't really matter for any bunny players that's over mastery well 23 24 they can still kill everything in one second <laughs> so uh, we, we we have been in an invasion with three bunnies basically you just uh, run to the end luckily we don't really well not luckily yeah we don't really need to collect anything we just need to run through the um, invasion for the sake of our our you know the daily mission things so please share with me how what do you think about this update because we we was expecting right you can have a public 
surge you can have party members into the invasion and you really increase the difficulties by not only by increasing the monsters especially you don't really feel the difference and you see when you are collecting the brains you still collecting 10 brains why 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 don't you just say okay you, we need to now we need we need to collect 40 brains 60 brains right <laughs> so 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 in really just no fun anymore so that's what we think about this invasion update and now let's talk about the other update about <clears throat> besides the invasion so they also make a change for one of the hot spot that we, we we all like to do for leveling up there are like i think two hot spots for people who want to level up and this one is on the fortress and this one you cannot do without bunny this is one of the few places people welcome bunnies <laughs> Not on infiltration, not on the invasion because they just take away the fun bit. And um, but for leveling up, it's nice to have a bunny with you. <laughs> so, so this is the cave. This is called the Fallen Ark Void Fragment. Um, many people may not know what does that mean, but you must know this cave. <clears throat> this electric one. Oh. Okay. So you can see here, in here, you will see um sniper show up on this one. Okay, and you see this cave is a lot bigger cave. Uh without much use basically because they still spawn in the same place. They st still spawn here and then they still spawn there. So when we are doing level up, when we want to do a quick leveling up, you can just, one person can stand here, and just focus on this alleyway. And then one, others, we will see a lot of people that just come here. Okay, this is a sniper that spawned, and that's one sniper, right, that's one sniper, and that's it. That's. The main change, one sniper spawned here, so one bunny cannot just jump in there and then cover all the way to there. You know what I mean? Uh, most of some bunnies, if they focus on the range, they can cover the whole cave, that two spawn point, and they, they can just kill everyone that way. But now they're forcing the bunny to move to there. That's the change they made. Really? Like, <laughs> why don't you just, why don't you add another spawn point here? Right, for to spawn a little bit more monsters. You know what I mean? But it's just, I don't know. And, and, and it's, it's a quick and a little bit lazy way to do things. I would say because you see like here is the same. Nothing really changed. Nothing really changed. Besides that one there. And then on the second round you don't even it doesn't even spawn here. So um Yeah, why? Why do you do that? You know, but anyway, that's that's what they do. <laughs> a quick fix, a really quick fix for 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 bunny you um for the players basically. Okay, so that's one thing <clears throat> about this cave, and then they also have updated the traps, meaning the laser lights in. Sterile land in Atna Desert, in White Night Gulch, and Hagois, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Hagios, Hagois, Hagis. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> yeah, sterile land on the laboratory, hard. Atna Desert, Caligo Asuri, and Asylum, 
Okay, both normal and hard. Bio lab, both normal and hard. The heaven and the old mastery, old mystery, normal and hard. So, so they they kind of kind of, um, adjust how they do the laser light. Is it more difficult? We tried a few a few of them. It is actually all right. Uh, but of course, maybe because after you gone through um, gluttony and <laughs> after I gone through gluttony and invasion before the update, everything becomes pretty all right. <laughs> so no, so so yes. Please share with me what you feel about this update um, for for these traps. Because the last update, I don't know if you remember, in the last update, they take away the thing that make you unable to get up. You know what I mean? Like before the last update, the 1.1.2 update, like once you're down by the trap, by the laser light, it's very difficult, especially if you are stuck in the middle. It's very difficult for you to be um, untrapped until you are dead right because you get up and then you got zapped again you, you get up and then you got zapped again so that's is is unlikely for, for for anyone to get up from that situation and you will just be killed for no reason and if you are in a harder if you are a new player and then you are with another bunch of new players like you are killed in a way that not really like your fault and you're like you're killed by the arrows that you're not able to rectify so from the 1.1.2 update you will not be put down all the way through like once you're zapped down once and that's it <laughs> you can get off and move on and then now they're updating how the laser light uh, the arrangement of the laser light basically so yes please let us know what you think about this <clears throat> also i'm sure all of you will notice that uh when you are running now when you are running into all this well how do they call it scout monsters okay i call them minions when you are bumping into these minions you will find them like now it's 100% chance they will definitely drop HP or MP or HP and MP orbs and the bullets. In some of the missions, sometimes when you're fighting them solo, it is not easy. This one, it is not easy for you to just <clears throat> do it all the way through without health, especially if you are a solo player and you are in the beginning of your of the game right and and you're trying to do things by yourself and and then but it's not easy to do it without without any like what what, what we did before is we just get killed and then go back to the outpost to get the ammo and the health and then run back you will still be put in the same mission I'm talking about missions like this, the the void missions, yes, the void missions, that's what I'm trying to say. So especially when you're doing the void missions, when you are, in, um, when you are not like us, oh, I just missed them, when you're not like us, like level 26, right, when you're not that advanced in the game and you want to do it by yourself you don't really want to ask anyone to help you because like for example that's not what i do and that's not what we do um but yeah so so it's nice to see that okay finally you have a 100 percent drop chance drop rate by these scout monsters uh where are they when you need them Seriously, <laughs> it's always the case that you will never find them when you need them, and when you don't need them, they're just everywhere. Is that always the case? Please, see, you always have 
health, so you always have MP, and then you have bullet, the ammo, right? So, and so it's 100% chance drop rate. For me, anyway, it's 100% chance drop rate. If you think, if, if you notice it's not 100% drop rate, please do let me know as well. Thank you very much. Okay, they also update on Descendants. First of all, they update the Eugene. Eugene, um, Eugene's skill, hyper, hyper reactive healing ground skill, now heals HP after granting purification, rather than before. Okay, so Eugene is improved. Also, they all improve skills of Frena, Kyle, and Esmo. We haven't, <clears throat> because we deleted our Frena, because it, she wasn't good. And <clears throat> we haven't built another Frena yet because on the 10th of October they are going to bring out the ultimate Frena. So we are not able to really test the Frena, but I can tell you we can see a lot of Frenas now running around on the field. <laughs> and they do, we can see, we can see they do a lot bigger damage from how we observe. They, they are like Vesa or Volby. This kind of, this kind of um, descendants, this kind of descendants, uh, instead of blaze or or um, Volby's water. Okay, so <clears throat> what is this? So the the Rumzu trauma was set as present. It used to be set as a present, so it's impossible to deal damage to toxic colossus. So meaning a lot of Toxic bosses, you are not able to damage them at all by Frenna. So they fixed that issue now. Now we can see that, okay, in the contagion links for Frenna's, for Frenna's um, skill, the effect of contagion links have been changed. So now they will kill an enemy inflicted with room zero trauma. And then they'll be able to, they will have a chance to spawn a toxic portal. Okay. And when an enemy was killed, where the enemy was killed, enemy received damage and get inflicted with room zero trauma upon contact with that toxic portal. So you kill an enemy, the enemy will become a toxic portal and then that will kill other enemies. Which is pretty good. We are very, we are very, we're actually very looking forward to having, building the Frena. We're looking forward to building Frena. So this is the, like a passive. Okay, this is like a passive skill that would happen. Uh, when when Frenna killed anyone with the room zero trauma, basically whatever Frenna do, will will be whatever Frenna do. That's called a room zero trauma effect. Okay, and um, so and the damage of her skills is now increased so so it also adjusted to apply the toxic reaction effect instead of poison the toxic reaction effect deals more damage compared to the previous poison effect and can be applied simultaneously with panic despair decay and nightmare effect so so meaning um yeah you you, you just make you just toxicate the enemy with a lot more damage. Okay, so what is what do they do with the venom trauma? Her her first skill. When you are using the first skill, you will inflict panic attack instead of poison. Okay. And it will deal a lot more damage than poison. And it can be inflicted together with toxic reaction, despair, decay, and nightmare. 
increase the damage of the projectile, increase the duration and the range of toxic photo, and add continuous damage. Okay, so again, you see you see on the screen um the room zero trauma. Once you once once you kill the enemy with room zero trauma, they will become a pot. There's a puddle on the floor, and then that will create this continuous damage. That's a her. Uh, we can call it. <laughs> I was going to call it A one because we play um, Ray Shadow Ray Legend. Ray Shadow Legend. <laughs> that's her A one skill. <laughs> yeah, but that's her first skill, and. Uh, defense mechanism and toxic stimulation. Defense mechanism and toxic. Okay, this one. Her second, her second skill. <clears throat> they will increase the damage of room zero trauma, meaning damage she, of her skill, and now inflict despair rather than poison. So when you are using the second skill they will get desper effect and it also deals more damage and then it can be inflict together with toxic reaction panic decay so meaning if a monster uh, was hit by all one two three four all of these skills then they will have all of them at the same time and then they'll be killed very quickly together okay and the third skill, putrid venom. <clears throat> toxic swarm and toxic footprint now inflict zoom, room zero trauma instead of poison. And room zero trauma now inflict decay rather than poison. The same. So the decay effect will deal more damage than poison did previously and can be inflicted together with toxic reaction, panic, desper, and nightmare. Same thing, <laughs> it's just um, still similar LE effect with different different kind of reaction inflict that will be done to the enemies. It's called decay, okay, decay. And then the last is the venom baptism, the last one, the last skill. So that give her an unique weapon just like Volvi, like Vesa, like <clears throat> Haley. So they will increase the damage of this unique weapon. They will decrease the damage of room zero trauma, however, and inflict nightmare rather than poison. The nightmare effect will deal less damage than poison did previously and can be inflicted together with other things. So, I don't really understand. I don't really understand until we have her. <clears throat> and then we can understand better. <laughs> what do you mean by uh, when you are using this weapon, you will deal less damage. So that means the nightmare effect must be something very unique so we will want to use instead of dealing damage so we need to try that out before we can share with you our verdict but of course if you already have if you already have a friend i think most of you already have friend now please let us know what do you think about this venom baptism that deal less damage than all the other skills so why will you use this <laughs> can you share with us please thank you very much okay so she also have that contagion frena she also have that contagion thing i think that's the contagion links right so <clears throat> an enemy will be getting this again the room zero trauma instead of poison so this change is applied together with other changes made to skill with this patch. Increase the number of toxic photos spawning from contagion links. 
and the room zero trauma caused by skills with contagion module does not inflict toxic reaction, panic, desperate decay, or nightmare. So you don't want to have contagion module? I think? Is that what it means? Can you let me know? Players, descendants, please let me know. <laughs> like, I'm confused <laughs> by this. Of course, we, again, like, we we build for her now, we make her 40, and then we dismantle, we bind her. So, yes, please let us know, Frenna lovers, players, and then, and then we can, please enlighten us. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, neurotoxin synthesis. Synthesis. This change is applied together with other change made to skills with this patch. Increase the damage of room zero trauma. Okay, so I think that is a module and then and then that will be a better module for for the new Frena, I think. Okay. So that's Frena. We see a lot of Frena. And then what we did is we did rebuild our Kyle. We're still on the process of building him. Okay. We are on the pr process of dealing with him. Um, but just let me quickly go through this patch, this hotfix uh, of Kyle. So what do they do to Kyle? Basically, to sum up, they make it even better for in the boss fight. Like when it was released, everyone saying it's great for boss fight, and then we never seen any Kyle. And then, no, we never seen. And then soon after, I believe soon after the first season released, we don't really see anyone using Kyle in any boss fights. People using Lepic, and then of course once Haley's Haley's out, people are using Haley's. Um, and then glaze, we see a lot of glaze for damage dealers, but we don't really see Kyle's. And then now I think that making Kyle is even stronger and purposeful in the boss fight. So experienced technician does his passive move. It will decrease its shield recovery. In exchange, the cooldown has been decreased. So meaning Meaning, yeah, he can use his cool, his skills a lot faster, sacrificing his shield recovery, and you can now recover a certain amount of mag magnetic force upon the activation, even if no enemies are hit by the effect. And at the same time, you will recover more magnetic force depending on the number of enemies got hit by this. So if there's no enemies around so you will be able to collect this this magnetic force okay decrease the stack cooldown while increasing the damage second skill a2 i don't care i'm going to call it a2 um on the a2 this shield thing okay while using this skill you now recover magnet magnetic force by a certain percentage of max shield over time the shield cost while using this skill has also been slightly increased use a little bit more mp the barrier from magnetic board the barrier is now affected by Kyle's attribute resistance and the barrier's hp is now more proportional to Kyle's shield. So Kyle's attribute resistance and Kyle's shield, the number of these two will be very important for the A2. So if you like to and you know how to use this magnetic board, you need to really work on her his attribute resistance and his shield 
Okay, and the cooldown of magnet magnetic bulwark of this skill is also increased. Okay, this magnetism spurt increase the skill effect range. The magnetism spurt skill now heals your shield as well as your ally's shield. It now costs more magnetic force, and the skill cooldown has been increased. Okay, so magnetic force is generated while you are using this first move and the second move. You will collect in the mag magnetic force basically while you are using them. So it's a it's like the glee. You need to you need to use this move to create this magnetic force, and then to use this magnetic force to to activate your third and fourth skill. So for the third skill, it will not only heal your shield but also your ally's shield, your party member's shield. However, the skill power modifier for the damage of mag magnetism spurt will be slightly increased when decreasing the additional damage mag magnetic force modifier. When the self-directed eruption skill ends, it no longer heals the shield of allies, it now heals your shield instead, and the duration of traction has been increased. And increase the skill power modifier for the damage of self-directed eruption while slightly decreasing the additional damage magnetic force modifier. For the superconductivity thrusters, is that the right way to pronounce it? <laughs> superconductive bombing. Okay, meaning you are. You can fly your Kyle in the sky. Seriously, you try it. So once you accumulate all of your magnetic force, this part I know. Okay, <laughs> once you accumulate your magnetic force of your Kyle, you'll be able to fly in the sky. And the way the controlling is a bit better than Azimuth. <laughs> so, so you can actually. <laughs> Use it better than Ezimo. <laughs> Greatly increase the damage while increasing the cooldown. Okay. And the bombing skill is now affected by the skill duration increase stat. So you need to work on your skill duration. Firing the bomb now cost magnetic force as an absolute value rather than a percentage so you'll be flying the air and drop bombs each bomb consumes magnetic magnetic force to drop and the bombing stops when magnetic force is completely delete depleted on collision with an enemy deals damage to the enemy but additional damage from magnetic force on collision is not triggered Oh, that's not nice. So meaning you, while you are flying, you don't need to save the mag magnetic force. You should just use all of your magnetic force, and then before you hit an enemy, like the the boss, the named monsters. And the flying duration is affected by the skill duration. And then when you're using the skill, you will be immune to knock down and knock back. Okay. <clears throat> so you will need to work on your skill duration increase. They say it is going to become a very good champion for fighting the boss. I think especially on the, the last move, because you are able to generate a big hit on the enemy. So, yeah, like I say, you can see, you can see, right? You can see here, we are still building it. 
Yeah, it's in the progress. That's Kyle. Okay. Okay. So Esmo, I really, really, really like Esmo because we got his. We got one mod. One mod. We realized maybe not many people have. Okay. Um, because we don't see many people using them. This explosive propaganda. <laughs> I need to show you. So what do they do to Esmo? I'm very looking forward. We haven't started building him. We haven't started trying him. We don't have enough time. But let me let let let's go through this together. The effect is not triggered when you are hit instead of when your shield is depleted. So we're talking about the passive. He will drop a bomb on the ground when he got hit. Okay, the effect is not triggered when you are hit instead of when your shield is depleted. So which is very good. So whenever you are hit, you will drop a you will drop a bomb. And now using skills will reduce the cooldown of adventurous habit by a certain amount. So and the cooldown be increased. I need to keep an eye on the cooldown of the passive, the last bit. Time bomb. Time bomb. So you can drop like we can drop five time bombs, so we can place them and then we can we can Activate this with the second skill. Yes, with the A2. <laughs> so, yeah, you can drop the bomb and then activate it on the blast with the blast. You can now switch to other actions earlier when using this skill. If no longer cause it no longer costs MP and the cooldown has been decreased, so meaning we can activate the bombs when faster. The blast skill is now affected by more bombs. And increase the damage based on the number of bombs so the damage will be multiplied when we place more bombs which is very good so if you have two esmo <laughs> I, I hope i hope that will work that way as well if you have two esmo in the party do they do they do multiply bombs of each esmo i'm looking forward to that the explosive that spawn upon using the cluster bomb skill now explode earlier than before the number and damage of the explosive have been increased and the explosion range has been reduced the damage of cluster bomb now increase based on the number of bombs okay so the third skill guided landmine okay what they change is on the so you can have different modules. <clears throat> so this is the cluster bomb. If you use a cluster bomb, that's what will be affected. Um, as I mentioned earlier, on this part, and then if you're using, uh, I don't think we have that the guided landmine. The skill now be activated while moving and you can perform other actions when using the skill quicker than before an attached bomb now takes longer to automatically explode slightly increase the travel speed of installed guided landmines towards enemy installed guided landmine now can also be exploded with blast <coughs> so you can be activated with the blast okay and if you are using, if you choose to use another module called the uh, Arc Explosion. Oh no, sorry. The third, that is your last move. The Arc Explosion. You just rush forward. It's very difficult to control Esmo when, when you are using this. Okay, so... They simplify the skills animation, <laughs> so it's not as crazy as dramatic. Why? And now you're immune to knockback and knockdown while using this skill. 
That's reasonable. Well, upon reactivating the skill button or ending the movement, deals explosive damage to nearby enemies. If enemies hit by the explosive damage, have been beneficial effect. Have beneficial effect removed. So the animation is removed. I don't understand why. <laughs> That's why I love I Esmo because very crazy and dramatic champion descendants. Increase the duration of madness. It its effects now include an increase of skill power. At the end of the skill, grant madness effect to yourself. So, at the end of your arcane explosion, you will be a bit crazier, and then your skill power will be a bit stronger. I think. So you need to think. Which one you want to start first? So you, I think what I mean is maybe I can start with an arc, arc. If I want to do really good damage, I want to start with the arc explosion first. So I'm on the madness mode, <clears throat> and then I do other skills. The damage will be increased. So it's explosive evade. That's a module. If you equip this module, you will have this explosive evade. So you will spawn guided landmine while ro when rolling, which is not bad, I think. So whenever you're rolling, you will put down a guided landmine, and the in they increase the maximum number of the guided landmine if you have this skill. Okay, but we go for the explosive propaganda. Now I can use this skill when moving. What? The skill can be stacked now, and the cooldown has decreased slightly. And insert explosive propaganda is now properly affected by Esmond's HP and defense, and its damage has been slightly reduced. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Creative explosion. That's another one. So what do they say? After a dash, use up all available bombs to inflict great damage to nearby enemies. The more bombs available, the greater the damage inflicted. They will also simplify the skills animation and now you are immune to knockback when using this skill. The number of bombs that affect the blast skill when equipped with the creative explosion module has been increased. Decrease the skill power modifier, increase per stack, increase the duration of madness, also increase the cooldown, decrease effect. Okay, but I just want to show you. So, with the A1, you, you drop all this thing, this, that's your A1, you drop all these bombs. Right, so now I put down five. Okay, that's timer up, timer up, or I can use the B button to start it, or that is the propaganda. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Why would you not like him? Right, why would you not like him? It's a great taunting arc explosion. Do I move better? I do move better. I still got stuck. Okay. That's what you do and now I'm in a short madness short madness um singing. So if I put down a bomb it should increase the damage like that okay so that's as more and before i go through that please let us know what you think about all of these updates if you're using frena how do you find the frena of the updates i believe a lot of people love her because we really see a lot of people using frena now they are now i will not say everywhere but you see them more 
a lot more often. So do let us know, please. What do you think about Frenna? If you're using Kyle, whenever I see anyone use Esmo, I think you have very good taste of descendant. <laughs> please let us know. Like which 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 module do you go for? Like do you go for the explosive evade? Do you go for the explosive propaganda? Really, we haven't seen anyone using them. Or do you go for the creative explosion? Which one you you, you use um, for your Kyle? Oh, sorry, for your Esmo, right? And about your Kyle, how do you find him? Do you think it really deals a lot bigger damage? Do you, will you consider to use him for your boss fight? How do you find the flying skills? <laughs> Let us know, please. Okay, so now the update on 1.1.3 is the weapons module. Okay, so there are two new modules added. This one, Biosync Shield, reduce HP recovery from HP orbs by a certain amount and instead heals the shield by the said amount. Last then, when using a skill to attack enemies, consume all of your shield to deal additional damage equivalent to a certain percentage of the total damage. Okay, sacrifice your shield to increase your damage. The additional damage has base value. And the value increases based on the amount of shield consumed. And after activation, Recover shield by a certain percentage of max shield every second for a certain period of time. It has a cooldown. Okay, so the two new modules are added to this um, in this update already. It's already added. Okay. Okay, and now we also check. We can also find some different experience like where they place the storage and where they place the mailbox. They are now together. Okay, like the other day, I was wandering, was running around thinking, "Where is my storage box? <laughs> Where is my storage box?" So, um, the change is made to this one. Yeah. Okay. Now you can check recommend stats for each intercept battle. So before you go to an intercept battle, you'll be able to check what's the recommendation. I think useful for new players. Here you can see oh what's recommended and what what are you right now? You see? So what it says is I can definitely go in with an ESMO without a problem. <laughs> we will see. But but yeah, you can see this. So you know, okay, maybe you can try to do it or you, maybe you can try different descendants. Okay. Ultimate weapon will no longer be filtered as junk regardless of the exclusive exclude from junk cities. We talked about that before. If you want to dismantle an Ottoman weapon, you can still do, but you need to do it manually, not by filter. Okay, Max Capacity UP Modules now display capacity with the plus sign in the module UI. You can track items in the research UI. The tracked item in the research UI will no longer be untracked when the research is completed. So if you want to untrack it, you need to manually remove it from your tracking. In no resurrection zone of infiltration operations, a system message will tell you that you cannot abandon rescue during the state. Yes, we see that. You cannot abandon rescue when you're in the infiltration. So meaning you cannot kill yourself on purpose when you are already dead. You can now set whether to run or sprint by default for movement in game option. Ooh, that is helpful, I think. <laughs> 
So you can you can set wrong or sprint. Which one's faster? <laughs> sprint, is it? So I want to choose sprint all the time. Um you can change the firing mode. Grappling hook correction guide. Um what else? <clears throat> you can now set the controller insanity the vibration if you want to keep it strong or you can choose the dead zone. I'm not sure why it's dead zone. Can someone tell me why it's dead zone? Okay. The customized spawn setting have been, been moved to the descendant skins menu. If we, yeah. So if we want to update our, our, our spawn, you need to go to the descendant skins menu. The storage object under the workbench in Albion has been moved. That's what we mentioned earlier, the storage bin is moved. So for PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox Series X, S, slightly the game CPU performance, frame generation improvement and changes, fix an issue where in Embly, in Embly AMD frame generation of the cost frame drops, drops. You can now enable AMD frame generation on PS4 Pro and Xbox One. Remove a restriction where the option could only be enabled on 12 Hz display on consoles. You can now choose frame generation regardless of the upscale you are using on PC. Okay, so you can do some change on the performance in the options. So meaning basically they are a little bit more customization that players can can do okay and all the other things now you can view spawn despawn animation for each descendant in customization so you knew before you choose them you knew what they look like and they added a feature to rewatch cinematics you can use this feature by interacting with an Arcade Trace in Albion, the camp of a battlefield where the cinematic took place and the starting point of infiltration operations. So we do see there are some new interactions that we can find. Like yesterday I tried to go into in infiltration and, and there was something in the beginning of this infiltration and we can't really interact because we were just about going to um, battle so the infiltration operation cinematic can be viewed again by starting a private operation so if you want to watch them <laughs> okay just if you like the storyline i don't know maybe i will also record them and then to share with you as well on the youtube and that's just easier. Since cinematic provides higher quality lighting compared to the usual gameplay environment, they are perfectly suited for players to examine their customization. Since players who finish the story cannot see the ultimate descendants they've they farmed or their customized descendants in cinematics, we have added a feature to rewatch them. So now we can rewatch these cinematics after finish the story with the Haley you've acquired or the ultimate descendant you have worked hard to get. Get a more vivid look at your own descendant, customized with various skins and paints in high quality cinematics. Added preview in field button in the customized UI. Now you can preview the appearance and paint color with an actual field as the background. Okay, so that's pretty good. Shop, you can now buy products listed below in the shop. 
And so there are a lot, a, a lot of bundles, a lot of new skins coming out. Have a look. Let us know which one you like. I do see someone make their Blair exactly same as Ace in from One Piece. If you know Ace from One Piece, oh my God, one hundred percent just roll like Ace, and then the same the same skills as well just want to say that quickly okay the back attachment and spawn include in the premium ottoman descendant bundle are exclusive to the corresponding ottoman descendant and cannot be used by other descendants but when you're buying the bundles be careful okay because they say if you buy these bundles if you're thinking oh i'm going to use this spawn for for Esmo, they say you cannot do that. I don't understand why. It would be nice for Esmo to have this one, right? <laughs> okay. And they also fix some bugs. They fix an issue where you cannot acquire a mission object when monsters die before existing the dimensional gate. Descendant fix an issue where the field of view would be locked when changing weapons while using bunny's speed of light skill fix an issue where certain effect of ultimate bunny would not be displayed on the descendant list animation screen fixed an issue where using Haley's zenith skill on an unstable network connection could cause an incorrect field of view when shooting while aiming after the end of the skill Fix an issue where Ajax body enhancement skill module could cause the void energy UI to display the effect for only one segment. Fix an incorrect icon image icon image for Versa's cold snapping watch and hypothermia module description. Fix the incorrect icon image for Luna's aggressive melody skill module description. Fix the incorrection icon image for Lepic and Ottoman Lepic's power unit change skill module description. Fix an issue where shield recovery modifier did not affect certain descendant skills with a shield recovery effect, that's including Enzo, Eugene, Ajax, and Kyle's shield recovery skills are now properly affected by the said stat. Weapons and modules. Executors, executors, exaltation effect no longer activate when attacking enemies that are immune to the effect or hitting environment object in intercept battle. Fix an issue with the wave of light where the effect of solar halo remains when changing weapons. The effect of the laser finish module is not properly applied per cooldown when attacking an enemy with the Guardian Lens of King's Guard Lens. They also fix the issue with the acquisition info pop off for checked core materials in the access info, where the list would close when you place the cursor over it. Fix an issue with the acquisition info pops up in the access info screen under the certain display resolution where, where two tips for amorphous, amorphous materials would flicker. Fix an issue in the infiltration operation UI where hovering the cursor over the research materials in the reward list after hovering over the amorphous materials in the selectable reward could cause the tooltip to display the shape stabilizer application info and amorphous material linked reconstruction reconstructed device info buttons. Change the barricade height in all outposts to 2 meters or higher. Fix an issue leaving the map in the air in the fortress defense line. Fix an issue where attacking the colossals when they appear would not increase the frenzy gold. 
So we do have a lot of updates in this 1.1.3 and that's one of the reasons why I couldn't share this video a lot earlier because there's so many things you want to go through and like I said I'm like we still cannot go through Enzimo properly and we we will not do Frena until we have Ultimate Frena. Okay, so but still there are a lot of updates. Um please please let's let's play together and share with us what do you think about this update. My verdict is yeah <laughs> for now like good and bad i really do hope they can make the invasion better in a way for for players like us because now we are we already see a lot of players they're saying they are not coming back until 10th of october because that's when you have ottoman frena Right? Is it any point to, for you to rebuild your Kyle if you really love your Haley? And or your Lepid? Is there any point for you to build your Enzimo? You know? Um the invasion is becoming like I don't know. I don't know. We had Haley long before the update. So we are only doing invasion for the sake of the daily challenge. I think most of people are. And for the sake of the points that you should do for your for your other um for your battle pass and other achievement, right? For for that that's that's what we are that's the only reason now we're still doing the invasion. It, so so we do hope that they can hear us and then don't take away all the funds and the challenges. Yes, they are difficult, but they are not that difficult. Right? They are not that difficult. Like, again, if I can do it, then you can do it. Of course, it takes time to build your 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 weapons and your descendant. But that's why you play the game, right? enjoying the building and then you build your own descent and you build your own weapons and then you go through the challenges by with your own build and if everyone just running through with bunny in everything then you may as just make a bunny again <laughs> you know what i mean it's not like we hate bunny but sometimes they do annoying <laughs> They do annoying sometimes and or or if you can make it away like in the infiltration and invasion just keep bunny together you you keep bunny together we don't mind when we are farming things some bunny is the best champions for farming it's very efficient very fast there's you just let you put four bunnies together but you put three bunnies and one Ajax. What is that Ajax going to do? <laughs> you know what I mean. And then it's very often because they are so fast, you won't be able to collect things before the the final stage because they are the bunny just going through. Most of we can see some bunnies they are great, they will wait for you, but some bunnies they don't. You know? And we don't fault those bunnies who doesn't wait for you. But you know what I mean? Like, it's like you're just running through with an Ajax, a Lepic. You're just like going through a run from from the beginning to the end. And got, you, you will be um, teleported in the midway. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the purpose? Right. So, um, yeah. Please share with us what do you think about this update, this 1.1.3 updates that's released on the 26th of September. I'm sure there's going to a lot more update coming out and I will see if we are able to, you know, release update videos sooner next time. And yeah, thank you very much for being with us today and and I'm looking forward to 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 hear your feedback 
and I hope the first descendant is going to be a lasting game for us. Uh, otherwise, maybe we'll go to Warframe. We'll see. We'll see. Have a very good day, and then we will speak to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.